25 kilometers off road from Broome. Pretty much a big hike just to get there. Big dirt road. Probably one of the best kitchens ever for picking up pots, pans, plates, stove. Coffee, they even offer coffee, sugar, fridge, freezer. This is all of our stuff up here. Just so peaceful too. Here's like a little watch area. Oh, there's a little wallaby at the drinking hole. Probably one of the best camp spots in all of Australia I've ever been to personally. It's literally 25 kilometers out of Broome. Broome, you're gonna spend minimum 250 a night. So you drive 30 minutes and you get a place for $50. That's an agile wallaby. Black stripes across their face, they're called Agile Wallabies. So what's on the menu for Bracky? Toasted cheese and ham sandwiches. Hopefully we're lucky enough this morning. Yesterday morning there was actually a dingo. Yeah, the dingoes come here and try and smash the wallabies for Bracky. Hopefully we don't witness that guys, but hopefully we witness. Or well, you guys can at least see it. Much easier with a proper kitchen, eh? Yeah. Play. Got a production line going here. Yeah, trying our best. Should we just like go to the beach and chill at the beach all day to stay cool? Summertime cool off. Yeah, those summer cool offs are very important. Now keep in mind, we've spent up to $60 on powered sites for 50 bucks is what you get. Welcome to the yellow chat. It's small, but in towns like Broome, these are worth a million bucks. We get aircon and a fan, and I'll tell you what, it gets chilly. It gets like zero degrees, so you're snug in those rugs. So I set up a bed here, Brooke slept up here, and then we switched every two nights, but $50 cannot go wrong. Guys, we did get told off last night at around 11 o'clock for having the aircon on, because the next door neighbor said it sounds like a generator. Yeah, it's pretty loud. It makes a big <laughs> sound. But yeah, it was cold last night, so we didn't really need the aircon on. I don't know if you can see the sweat in my face, but this is from five minutes of this, being, this bad boy being off, so. Yeah, it's hot. So for the viewers, what's going on? So this is Wallaby, every time I start drifting off to sleep, he comes to the tent and he knows when I start going to sleep. Oh. <laughs> All the people can't be quiet. Oh, he's back. He's back. And what does he want? Can we hop away from me about four hops into the bush and wait for me to come back? As soon as I'm in there, he comes straight back up and look at me. You look terrible. It's probably just smelling you. Uh, they probably just like your scent. Apparently, if you meow to them, they'll go away. Just read on Google. Meow. Because they see them as a threat, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> we stayed at the bird observatory again last night, but without the little cabin. Uh, we just had a non-powered site, and um, as you would have seen by that quick clip from last night, uh, Bo didn't have the best night. Uh, I woke up about 12 times, because every time I started getting into that sweet drift, a can of wallaby would just stand by my tent and look at me. There were that many wallabies, guys. It may have been wild pigs there, because I heard like, I'm gonna get some bait and then go out fishing, so fingers crossed we can catch. So we can go out for a fish. Considering we only got four hours sleep, and a little bit of a morning pick-me-up. Drive-through coffee van, I've never heard of that, have you? Oh, first time for me. If I seem a bit flat today, I've got um, my wisdom teeth are coming through and it's pushing on my like gum, which is giving me a real bad headache, so. Yeah, hopefully this makes me feel a bit a little bit better. Cheers, thanks. Awesome. Cheers, thanks a lot. 
So we got three spots. First spot we're going to High Tide is Town Beach Jetty. You saw in the last episode. If we don't have any luck there, we'll go to the other spots during low tide. The goal is just to get any fish other than butterfish. So hopefully blue bone, trevally or giant trevally. If we can catch any of those at any different beach we're on. Jeez, you're putting a bit of pressure on us, big boy. We better catch. We better catch. Yeah, we didn't realize until we left because we kept thinking the tide's not coming in, but the tides have actually changed up and it was 7 a.m. high tide, so we completely screwed that up. His bow just went and got some shots. Let's f with him a bit. <laughs> that was fun. Because we are going off grid, we're going to make a pit stop at Woolworths first and get some food just in case we don't catch a fish. This is what it's come to. Bo, I was looking at fish behind the glass. There's a rule we made at the start of the channel we don't buy fish. Let's get a roast. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. Get some yep. Oh. Unexpected item in bag. We're actually lying. We're, we're, we're working up there. <laughs> Bo loves fishes. If you're wondering what Bo was up to, occasionally when we're not staying at a proper campsite, there's no kitchen, we just use the car wash to wash all our dishes. It's a quick and easy way. Have you had your wisdom teeth out? Why? Why just grew through? Is there like shade around the area or? Not a lot of shade, no. Nah. Is there many people down there or? No one's oh, awesome. I seen anyone all day. Yeah, sick. So no one's camping there. So Do a bit of fishing? Yeah, we. I did a bit of fishing. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, nice. If you go left, yeah, sick. there's a really cool rocky area there. Okay, awesome. And it's just like a straight drop off into the creek. Oh, sick. The good there. Someone put a trevally there. Oh, perfect. Um, oh, thanks for the tips. Appreciate it. No worries. Have a good one. You too. So as you would have just heard guys, I think we've got the campsite to ourselves. This is the most unreal camp spot. Crazy, like, and it's free. It's so good, we've got to get the drone up if we can. Uh, I just spoke to Lockie, the guy down fishing, and he said there's lots of queenies down there. You can literally see them pop up and go for live bait. He said he's been here a few times and every time he's been here he's caught so Sick. i reckon we'll get the fire going start the camp oven and um you you get a line out or something yeah sick oh, correct me if i'm wrong but that looks like snake trails right there You've got to be extra careful because the king browns are deadly out here there's so many guys know the drill for this camp oven to be properly heated we need to burn down the wood for at least two to three hours to get the coals hot enough to uh, get the camp oven going what a location though so stunning oh 
Oh, I don't think we got any issues. Yeah, this fire is heated. Yeah, we're gonna have a good meal tonight. So while this burns, let's go for a flick. So there's definitely Trevally. You can see them jumping at the bait fish, but the issue we've got is we're casting right onto a ledge and it's very rocky, the ledge. Um, so first cast, they got snags. So we're gonna re-rig up, get out there. Hopefully we can have a huge feast, a roast and a cooked fish. Yeah, Not that we need so that much, but we could probably put on ice for tomorrow. Yeah. Let's do it. That's the way. Just let all that crap burn. Burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno. Burn, baby, burn. And no one down. <laughs> Cranking. I don't know about you guys, but that is, that's looking pretty good. I can chuck a bit of salt on top, a few spices, we're good to go. So I found this bit of chili that we bought the other day. I'm gonna try something different, give Bo a little surprise. It's gonna be pretty good. Got a bit of company out there, Bo's fishing. Roast is almost on, happy days. If you're wondering why I'm putting this over the top is because last time a little bit of ash got in. Look at this, guys. This is living. No one around. So I'm going to set a timer for 45 minutes. As I was saying to Bo before, like, this is pro... We said the last camp spot um, at the start of the video was the best, but I feel like this could be beating it. Camp right here fishing. You can't really ask for much more than that, guys. Oh, let's go see how Bo's doing. Yeah, so right there, right there, is a, that snake skin, uh, a snake is shedding right now. There's a hole that goes right up into the rock. Look at that. Is it? Yeah, look at that. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps already. I oh, hate snakes. I wonder if we can tell by the scales if it's like a brown. Any snake experts out there that know snakes by their scales, if you're able to tell us what that is. So beautiful, but at the same time, so deadly. I don't know what it is about being out here. I just always feel the best when we come out back. Just like so free and like I can breathe. Beautiful. So explain what happened with the fire. Oh, okay. So we didn't burn wood long enough to set the camp oven up. Didn't get hot enough. So we had to go get a whole bunch of more sticks. So right now we're burning more sticks. It's going to take like a few hours just to get this roast going. And for those hardcore fans watching, what does that writing on your ankle mean? Or say? Oh, this one? Yeah. Ooh. My voice broke a little there. Through every dark night lies a bright day. What does that mean to you? Well, I got it for this girl. <laughs> she um she's she was dying actually. Oh um, wow. Yeah. And so she got this quote and she wanted to get it with all of us boys to remind us that Yeah, you can always come out of the dark tunnel. Have your brothers got it? Yeah. Where? Uh Luke has it. Actually, I'm not too sure where they have it. We should have, what were we thinking, burning for an hour and thinking that was enough for a roast and it's bigger than the other roast? Yeah, I know. So if you've made it this far through the video, comment down below. We always like to see who is watching, to, you know, more than half the video, so. Mm -hmm. Especially like three quarters of the way of the video too. Because a lot of people skip to the end. Yeah. So like the true dedicated ones will watch around the three quarter mark. How far do you usually watch through our episodes? Like... Do you watch a quarter? Do you watch the full thing? Do you watch halfway, then come back and watch it later? Comment down below, because we'd love to know that. That should cool down good. 
I'm definitely a summer cool down type of person. But I do love my winter warm ups. <laughs> Dude, you can't just chuck logs on top. You won't be saying that when you're eating a delicious roast. Right, get that off. Summer. Oh, guys, Nathan, comment down below what you think of Bo's technique here. <laughs> Don't just get Nathan onto me. Remember, <laughs> remember I said we're going to start doing things properly. If you're going to tell Nathan to comment, I'm going to tell Luke, what do you reckon of Brooke's performance in this video so far? <laughs> Don't expose me to the crowd like that. <laughs> Big P, have you hashtag gone wild yet? And for all of you new viewers who don't know who we're talking about, we're just chucking out names. These are fans and brothers and friends that have been watching the channel for so long. So when we say like Luke, Big P, Nathan, uh, we're just sh shouting out like people that watch the channel. So that's more of a reason for you guys to subscribe. You just dry hump that rock. It's <laughs> a nice rock, man. Don't just try and pull it's it off. It's a nice rock, look at it. You might as well not wear pants with that. Singlet. I can do whatever I want. Yeah, you wear a skirt every day. Guys, that wind's dropped. The water looks really nice, so I don't know anything about this area, but I'm gonna give it a crack. Keeping an eye out for snakes after seeing that thing before. Dude, look at that water. It's like turquoise. No, no. I have no idea. Comment down below. But is that a channel? I know fishing near channels is. Can you see that on camera? Yeah. On. Oh, no way. Nah, you're not on, are you? Oh, it's a butterfish. Oh no way! I thought we got rid of these. <laughs> I knew that's what was eating our bait before. Is that a foul hook as well? Another butter butterfish. I knew I'd hook onto something then. You know what? Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even mind having that for brekkie tomorrow. Yeah, so we got ice. Yeah, we got ice. Yeah, cool. They're good eating, guys. Chuck this good boy in the ice bucket. That'll be brekkie tomorrow. If you guys didn't check out the last recipe in the last episode with the butterfish, actually awesome. So if you catch butterfish, it's a good way to cook them. That tastes delicious. Got a little stinker. Oh, it kind of looks like a cod. No, I think that's a little cod. Let's go. There's a lot of action going on. Bait jumping up, big fish coming to get the bait. And we just got this cod right now. It's like a, I think it's a rock cod again. Too small for eating, too big for live bait. Sorry, mate. This so is... we're gonna chuck him back in the drink. If I can get him off. What's going on down here though? A lot of action. If you already commented down below, you bet us, but one local man came up to us and I said, hey, can you tell snakes by their scales? And he said, yeah, let me take a look. He said, see those small circles there? That means it's not a brown. The big circles are king browns, which is what you have to watch out for because they're very, they're the most venomous snake in the world. Um, and then he said, see how this at the end, it's got a diamond there. He said, that's a Stimson python. And I said, is that poisonous? He said, no, they're actually very good eating. So these, is that what he said? Yeah. And that's him right eating. there, even. Yep. So yeah, I'm glad we didn't come across the king brown shed because I would not want to sleep here at all. No way. Yeah. See you later. Stimson. Stimson. Thanks. See you later. Yum. Oh, oh. I reckon this is better than your mum's. Bon appetit, guys. I hope for your sake, your dinner is just as good as this tonight. If not... Mm. Bon appetit. Wow. That's definitely a dinner suggestion right there. Mm. Yum. We have not looked through this medical kit yet, and there's a chance we may get bitten when we're out here. It's like, just say we got bitten by a brown, you got about an hour before it kills you. And if just say we get bitten, we don't know whether to put the snake bite thing above where it's been bitten, below, and we need to be straight on it, boom, straight in the car, the other one boosts the hospital. So, we're thinking smart. Yeah, we're hoping that there's a snake bite kit in here. We're gonna train ourselves a little bit in first aid. Because when you think, is that for an indigenous 
lady to come to us and be like, oh, just watch for the Browns. Yeah, um, it's pretty, it sounds pretty serious. They're locals, they know. By the way, thank you, Mum. Yeah. She fully kid us, kitted us out. I think this was like 500 bucks. Yeah. Love you, Mum. Oh, it could save our lives, Gina. What's this? Snake and spider bite treatment guide. So we're gonna... Do not try to catch or kill the snake. That's useful. Do not wash or wipe venom off skin. This is very important. Hospitals are able to identify snakes from venom samples taken from the snake bite. So just leave it, don't move. It shows us what to do here. Read it and learn. If you guys want to learn more about snake bites, I'd suggest probably before going out, do your research, look it up. It's definitely worth it. Yep. You don't right, need a glove. That's, oh. Dude. <laughs> We're doing this properly. You Shut! Know, oh, no, now Nathan. you're not taking it serious. Nathan. Nathan, tell him off. 